INEC raises concerns ahead of Bielsa Imo Kogi elections. Every day in Nigeria, young people who are the marginalized majority turn 18 years old, yet they are not given the opportunity to get voters' cards easily. A non-governmental organization is running a project called Register 18 to awaken INEC to put to action the need for continuous voters' education. Along with those headlines, we are going to be looking at off the press to see what headlines made it to the front pages of some of our national dailies. A very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. It's a Wednesday morning and we do hope that you are going to have a wonderful time being with us. Wednesday frenzy, that's what we call it. We do hope that Monday to Tuesday, whatever rigors you may have encountered, today you loosen them up a little bit and make sure the rest of the week is without any hitches. We're glad that you were able to make it this far this morning and you have joined us. We hope that you'll stay on till the end of the show. We'll go straight to the, uh, some of the things that are trending on social media and elsewhere. And um, uh, first of all, we're going to be looking at federal government that has filed 20 charges against the MFLA and seeks uh, the withdrawal of firearms charge. Remember that the federal government had charged him uh, for possessing uh, firearms that, according to them, was illegal. So the federal government has applied to withdraw the illegal possession of firearms charge right now. Uh, they charged that he fi it filed against the suspended Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN Governor Godwin Emefile, at the Federal High Court in Lagos. Remember, Emefile has been going to court uh, with a Bible and, uh, well, you know, uh, all, the, all the things that he feels will be uh, helping him in the case. The judge had on July 25 admitted MFLA to a 20 million naira bail on a two count charge of illegal possession of firearms and ammunition and ordered his remand at the Koyi Correctional Center pending the fulfillment of his bail conditions. Uh, but the Department of State Services, DSS, re arrested him after a clash with prison officials. On Tuesday, Director of Public Prosecutions, uh, DPP, uh, the Federal Minister of Justice, Mohamed Bakado, Bakodo, rather, uh, Bakodo Abubakar, told Justice Nicholas Oweibo that the fresh application followed the result of further investigation. He made his application orally, but Defense Counsel Joseph Daudu uh, opposed him, arguing that because the government was in disobedience of the court's order granting MFLA bail, its application could not be taken. Uh, speaking with journalists after the day's proceedings, Abubakar said the fresh charges were filed at the Federal Capital Territory High Court. One of the counts accuses MFLA of conferring unlawful advantages. That, those are the words that were used. President Tinubu on June 9 had suspended MFLA and ordered an investigation into allegations leveled against him. Now, Tinubu later appointed a special investigator to probe CBN, and amid this probe, the Apex Bank released its audited financial statement which showed that it is owing J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs a combined sum of $7.5 billion as of the financial year ending December 2022. Federal government dissolves advertising. Okay, well, before we go into the next trend, uh, top trending, we'll, we'll just say... We're just wondering, the CBN governor uh, must have uh, acted uh, on some orders as well, even though a lot of people are arguing that he should have known better, and even if the president came with uh, some proposals that were not good enough for the economy, he should have been able to stand up to him and say, look, this will not work. We do hear, we also hear that uh, a lot of trillions of naira were printed uh, in order to to make uh, the, the Naira stable and so many other allegations or so many other things that have come up out of these uh, audited uh, results that Nigerians are seeing for the first time. And, and I'm wondering, or a lot of people are wondering, uh, why is MFLA being called to uh, take the, the, the fall 
uh, and the president is working scot-free. Nobody is even saying anything, or the former president is working scot-free. Is it that the laws of Nigeria do not uh, also hold the president, even after office, whatever you do uh, when you are in office, even when you leave it, the laws will not hold you? Or how is it? How, how long is the immunity, immunity of any uh, serving governor or president? Is it that if you do things, um, just, just for purpose of example, if you do criminal things while you are in office and you cannot be prosecuted because you have that immunity, does it mean if you leave office, you still cannot be prosecuted because you did those things when you were in power? These are questions that we need answers to so that we know whether whatever the government or the governor or the president uh, is doing while in office, we know that no matter what happens, where, wherever and whenever, he cannot be prosecuted. And so people will know what to do at the time that these people are committing these offenses against humanity, if that is the case. So we don't know. We're just raising eyebrows. Why is the affiliate taking the fall? Is he a scapegoat or... Um, they have just started somewhere, they are going to go somewhere else. Because if the MFLA has to take the fall on his own, that means that uh, he did it or he acted alone. And if he did act alone, let him take the fall. But if he didn't act alone, whoever else was supposed to be involved should be involved. At least ask some questions, let us know why whatever happened, happened. Now we've seen what uh, he's being accused of. And they the problem of fire, owning firearms has been dropped. The charges have been dropped. What about the time he has served uh, in the correctional service? He has been detained there for the firearms charges that have been dropped. Um, well, I always say I'm not a legal luminary, so I may not know some of these things, but these are questions that we ask ourselves. Okay, so they suddenly just dropped the charges and they are taking fresh charges, 20 of them right now, against the Central Bank of Nigeria governor. Well, we'll look at how uh, that will pan out. Uh, we also know that uh, if, if we say now that all eyes are on the judiciary, it may be a crime against the government because we hear that uh, the board uh, in charge of uh, advertising in Nigeria has been dissolved because they approved a signpost which shows or which says that all eyes are on the judiciary because they're looking at the judiciary to see that justice is done in the case uh, of the election 2023 that is in court. It just just a, lot, a, a number of people, a few people are the ones that are going to decide the fate of Nigeria. And so the federal government is saying that they shouldn't have approved that because it does not meet the standards. Well, the federal government has disbanded the Secretariat of the Advertising Standard Panel. That's what they call it, ASP. The decision is linked to its approval of the billboard title, like I have said, all eyes on the judiciary. We've seen bags, we've seen signposts, we've seen uh, buckets and other souvenirs carrying these. They, it's uh, allegedly blackmailing the presidential election petition tribunal. That's how they put it. And the Director General of the Advertising Regulatory Council of Nigeria, ARCON, Dr. Olale Konfado Lakbo, uh, disclosed the dissolution of the panel in a statement released on Tuesday. Fado Lakbo said the council has uh, also suspended its director and deputy director in charge of regulations to allow investigations into the issue. While uh, noting that some of the adverts were not approved by the ASP, he said the panel erred in the approval of one of the concepts as the advertisement failed vetting guidelines. So what are these vetting guidelines? We need to know them so that we see how derogatory or how blackmailing uh, this statement, all eyes on the judiciary, uh, is. The ASP is the statutory panel under the council charged with the duty of ensuring that advertisements conform to the prevailing laws of the Federation as well as the code of advertising ethics of the advertising profession. So clearly, according to them, this one did not meet those uh, standards. The Arcon DG said the council would set up a committee to investigate the circumstances leading to the erroneous, I'm saying that in quote, erroneous approval of one of the concepts of the advert and the breach of the vetting guidelines. The all eyes on the judiciary narrative started as a social media campaign, allegedly by the supporters of the presidential candidate of the Labour Party uh, in the person of uh, uh, Peter Obi, 
and uh, the campaigners are alleging plans by the judiciary to favor the incumbent president, Bola Tinubu. And so this advert was said to be uh, a no-no for the advertising uh, body. So the people who are supposed to vet or, uh, or not, they say have erred. And because of that, they have been dissolved. They have been removed from office because of that. So Nigerians are asking, how is it a blackmail? Let us understand how this is a blackmail. So if, so, for instance, somebody comes to say, all eyes are on the presidency because we want them to do good, we want them to perform better, is that a blackmail on the presidency? If we say all eyes are on the ministers uh, that are going to be inaugurated, uh, is that a blackmail on the ministers? So now we are saying, or they are saying, or whoever sponsored it is saying, all eyes on the judiciary. Um, how is that a blackmail? It's a question that some people who know what the definition of blackmail uh, is can answer for us, or people in government can answer for us how that is a blackmail. And if that is a blackmail, if everything, for instance, the things that I've mentioned right now, if they are not blackmails, then how is that one a blackmail? All eyes on the presidency or all eyes on the president, all eyes on the governor, all eyes on the ministers, all eyes on the Senate, is that or are all those ones blackmails? Well, uh, that is um, what we've heard, and uh, so far, so good. We are, we are still watching, uh, should I be afraid to say, all eyes are on them. We're still watching to see the outcome of all the cases that we're seeing. The judiciary, well, whether it is said or not, everybody's waiting for the judiciary to make the pronouncements. If they resolve, or if the judgment is in favor of the incumbent, at least the people will know why it is in favor of the incumbent. If it is not in favor, we still should know why it is not in favor of the incumbent, because we still have a future. There are people who are going to contest for elections. They should know the booby traps that are involved so that they don't get to be victims of that. So whatever, wherever it goes, either ways, we need to know why whatever is happening is happening. And so this is our Nigeria we should be concerned. So everybody is watching. And if you ask me, those are the words translated into all eyes on the judiciary. All eyes were on INEC before the election, but INEC did what they did. And maybe they have a good reason. Maybe they don't. But nobody felt too pressured to do uh, what they need to do. Whatever you need to do, if you do it well, there's not going to be any pressure there. But hey, uh, they have their standards. We need to read more on that. We need to find, we need to research more on that. But whatever it is, we still thank God for small mercies. We've heard the uh, presidency come out to say that they will stabilize the fuel uh, prices. Nothing will make the fuel prices go up. Uh, they are going to do everything within their power to stabilize the fuel price. Even though it is a free market right now, the federal government has still said that they are going to stabilize uh, that uh, um, price of fuel. Stabilize at what point is the question now? Are you stabilizing it at 710 or 720 that people are saying this price might go to, or you're stabilizing it at 500 or 610? Or where are you stabilizing it? Are you making it stand at five, seven something or six something? Where is the stabilization going to come? Are you going to make it cheaper and make it remain that way? Where, where is it going to happen? The dollar is falling every day it's falling, or the, the Naira rather is falling against the dollar. Uh, we hear that the dollar crashed a little bit and they, it, it was selling at 700 and maybe 50 per dollar, uh, but is that so much of a crash that Nigeria should be applauding? Shouldn't we be hearing one dollar, one naira as the campaign was in 2014 till now? We're hearing 700 and something, and we're clapping that it is good. We shouldn't be clapping. But hey, even though like we heard the, we heard the uh, former chairman of APC, Adam Soshimole, saying that um, uh, the president, the present uh, government inherited a, a, an economy in shambles. Uh, so <laughs> we're just wondering, inherited from who? inherited from the same APC, we shouldn't be talking about individuals right now. We should be talking about the APC because democracy is such that no matter who is at the head, the party should have uh, the strength enough to hold him uh, accountable to, 
to, to rein him in and, and call him to order if he's doing something that is so wrong because there are other people who are in the leadership of the APC. Everybody or anybody who becomes a governor or a president is a, 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 to spearhead the ideologies of a particular party. So if someone did wrongly, that means that party failed. So now the, uh, Adam Soshimole is coming to say that the economy was, that was inherited by this government was in shambles. It's just, I don't know, maybe that's an indictment on the party itself because the party produced the president that put the economy in shambles or how, whatever adjective he used to qualify that. But hey, this is Nigeria. We always hope and pray. And we pray that one day Nigeria will be better than it is right now. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at the newspapers. Some of the newspapers uh, will be looking at how having very screaming headlines and we'll hope to treat those screaming headlines uh, when we return. Just stay with us. <laughs>